Many of you do not know this, but when Dragon Ball Super ended, I actually began creating a series of videos talking about a Dragon Ball Super cinematic universe where each movie would tie into another movie with several and various Dragon Ball characters. And at the time, I was talking about live action. And live action can work for Dragon Ball when it has good story, good direction, and good casting, but it does have a stigma on it, and if it's done incorrectly, well, then we have a problem. Just like Marvel's phase 4 graph that shows all the movies that are coming out in the next couple of years, somebody did the same thing for Dragon Ball, with the first movie being Dragon Ball Super Broly. Now, this shows what the future of Dragon Ball could possibly look like. So let's break down these movies and see what each one could be about going with a cohesive story to the end. Dragon Ball Super Broly we already know, we already seen it, it was a great movie, phenomenal, and it is the start of this cinematic universe. Then we have Dragon Ball Super 2 or as it says right here, Dragon Ball Super Season 2, and I think that Dragon Ball Super Season 2 should be mainly focused on the moral arc. Everything that is happening in the moral arc right now, it should only focus on that. Make a tightly knit, concise season with great animation, great storytelling, and have it be something that comes out every six months. That way they can work on it as hard as possible and give us the best product like say Attack on Titan, My Hero Academia. The way they do it, Dragon Ball Super 2 needs to do it that way. Then January we have Yamashi, the legend of a Super Saiyan. Now Yamashi was the first character that I thought that Broly was before we knew it was Broly. So I thought the story was going to be about him. This is a character that a lot of fans have made a lot of stories about and it's a character that's not 100% official. Akira Toriyama just kind of created him in an interview and so he doesn't really have much basis, no real look to him. It basically is a character that could be anybody but it definitely makes sense for this character to get its own first movie first. So what I want to see in Yamashi, the legend of a Super Saiyan, is I want to see the entirety of the story of Yamashi's rebellion against the evil Saiyans. I want to see Yamashi turn into the first Super Saiyan God, and then we get to see what happens to him. Now, at the end of this movie, he is not going to die. He is going to be either frozen or lost in time. That way, we get to see him further on in the future. He is going to be essential to the storyline of Phase Saga Shenron. The next TV show that we have is Hit. Now I'm saying TV show because I think that a hit movie would be way too much. I think Hit has enough richness in his job and his character and his missions that he could actually have his own little mini series. So I would definitely like to see a hit series and that would build up Hit for what's to come. Broly vs Galactic Patrol. The Galactic Patrol sends Miris and the rest of the agents to Planet Vampa to try to take out Broly or control him. They got a hit from the Frieza Force that Broly is on Planet Vampa and he is extremely dangerous. Now of course the Galactic Patrol isn't on best terms with the Frieza Force but they go ahead and check it out when they get there. A situation arises where they accidentally either hurt Chi-Lai or they maybe put her in handcuffs or something. That brings out the rage of Broly and Broly attacks them and then we have a situation where Broly faces off against the Galactic Patrol and we could see actually more advanced fighters from the Galactic Patrol as the same level as Mirus. Of course Mirus, you know, can dodge Super Saiyan God and Super Saiyan 3 and all that so he should be able to take on Broly no problem. And the conclusion of this story or this movie is going to be Broly joining the Galactic Patrol. The next series that we have here is Roshi and I would love for this to be a TV show of Roshi's younger days when he was training disciples, just going through the land, fighting against bad guys, leading to his fight against Goku as Jackie Chun. And I would love Roshi to be in the exact same style as Dragon Ball. Not Dragon Ball Z, 
Dragon Ball. This TV show will be extremely refreshing, a breath of fresh air. The next movie we have is The Warrior Bardock. Now, this movie is going to be a movie about Time Patrol Bardock, essentially Xeno Bardock. Now, Bardock does get killed in that blast at level Planet Vegeta, but just like in his own little spin-off movie, he gets sent back in time, turns to a Super Saiyan to face off against Frieza's ancestors, and this movie is going to hone in on that. It's going to remake that whole movie in the first act alone and then after that the freezer race is going to send more and more of their family members to try to take on bardock and fail eventually leading to bardock getting contacted by the time patrol and they're going to come talk to bardock and enlist him in the time patrol the next movie that we have is oob and i want this to be goku and oob training throughout the movie and Goku enlisting Oob into a Universe 6 style tournament where he faces off against other aliens and other races throughout the other universes. Basically kind of like the Tournament of Power with less stakes, even though the Tournament of Power didn't really have any stakes. And at the end of the movie, Oob's finally going to be able to control the Majin side inside of him and he's going to be just like he is in Dragon Ball Defiance where he can kind of control the Majin Buu state and basically is impervious to attacks and blasts and stuff like that. After that, we have Dragon Ball Super Annihilation. Now, this is going to be the culmination of all these movies, basically bringing all our heroes, the Z Warriors, or the new Z Warriors, to face a huge threat. Now, the huge threat in this movie is going to be Yamashi. Yamashi is a character that at this point now has come back. Yamashi has returned, and this time he has gone straight to Universe 6 because he found out that the same on universe 7 have been all destroyed and that they were evil yamashi realizes that the saiyans need to be purged from the remainder universes finds out that there are a whole bunch of saiyans on universe 6 so he goes to universe 6 and he starts exterminating the saiyans that are there this brings him in conflict with hit who gets tasked to try to take him out Hit cannot defeat Yamashi, comes back to Universe 7 asking for help. He gets the help from the Galactic Patrol, Broly, Oob, Goku, Vegeta, and of course, Master Roshi is going to be there. I mean, he got his own show, so he kind of deserves to be there, and we'll find a spot for him to do. We'll find something for him to do. Maybe he works out in the evacuation. Maybe he's there for Goku's support, but he's there. They all face off against Yamashi who gets more and more powerful with every attack, with every fight. But he's fighting these guys piecemeal. They're coming through and they're not fighting him together. Hit is basically out for the count. He tried to get help from Universe 7. Roshi's no help. Oob, Goku, and Vegeta are trying to face off against him at first. But they also get raffle stomped. And then we have Broly and the Galactic Patrol. The Galactic Patrol gets handed. Broly tries to take out Yamashi and he gets the furthest but still no go and that is going to be the ending of Dragon Ball Super Annihilation it's going to end on a cliffhanger leading to Dragon Ball Super Epilogue and Dragon Ball Super Epilogue is going to see all these characters facing off against Yamashi on their own Yamashi is going to find new abilities new powers new transformations and he is going to be extremely strong and a worthy adversary for the United team but he cannot handle them all on their own and in this movie Bardock who is a time patrol is going to come in and he is going to face off against Yamashi as well. Eventually they end up defeating Yamashi leading to the huge reveal of the time patrol's existence and that ends Dragon Ball Super epilogue leading into the second phase of the Dragon Ball Super movies. Either way I definitely love this graph. I love telling the story and trying to connect all the pieces together. I just think that the years between all these movies is a little bit too far spaced. I mean this is almost over 10 years over a decade but i still think that it is possible that we may get that much distance between these movies i mean animation takes a long time to make anyway guys let me know in the comment section below what you think and what stories you want to tell in dragon ball super face saga shenron this is going to be blackscape signing off take care guys Subscribe for more content.